Well, good afternoon, everyone. It is another beautiful day out there as our string of nice spring weather is continuing. It's a might warm for my personal taste. It's about 80, about the mid 80s, somewhere thereabouts. And I'm looking at the satellite photograph right here and it actually looks pretty good. I don't see much in the way of any kind of uh, stuff anywhere near us. I'm gonna run this just a little bit. And yeah, it's not, not moving east too much, so I think we're going to be in good shape, for especially for the rest of today and probably into most of tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to look around here. Uh, this is UT Martin, and boy, that's down in Tennessee. It looks very nice, a little windy, and the winds do pick up a little bit. But uh, their temperature is 84 degrees, so that's just a sign that uh, the warmth is out there. Um, so I'm going to do a thing here. I'm going to look at some of the, the local cameras. If I can make sure I'm getting this called up right. And I have met Mark with us. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Hey, everybody. How are you today? Well, I'm just enjoying this nice day. And, uh, you know, it's a little warm, like I said, but, uh, yeah, it'll, it's going to change here soon. Uh, look at those cameras out there. What do you think? Just a lovely afternoon going on. We've got a lot of high clouds moving through. That's uh, uh, You can't see them that well on the satellite because they're fairly thin, but uh, right. they definitely dim the sunshine just a little bit yeah well and that's that's not bad for this time of year now we've got several things coming up on this uh, edition of uh, uh, our weather update i'm going to be showing a video and you might remember this mark because if i remember correctly you were close to me you wasn't with me but you were close to me we're going to show what it's like to ride in my vehicle uh, intercept vehicle as we go to track that tornado that hit t-gask and uh, this is some video a lot of you haven't seen. Some of you might have. You've been around me a long time. I've kind of showed it a little bit here and there. But this is the first time it's made public. And so I hope you guys enjoy that. And then coming up in the future, I'm going to have some other things. I'll tell you about that here as we uh, get ready to end the program. But uh, anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and let's take a look at the radar. Let's see if I can do this just correctly. Um, yeah, wow, I, I'm getting good at this, Mark. I'm finally starting to get the hang of it. And, of course, Paul's here to help me through it a little bit, but Crystal doesn't have to sit next to me with a fly swat to hit my hands anymore, so uh, I guess I'm doing something right. Um, let's see, we're not still on the radar. Let me go up here and change to the radar. Give me just a second here. Um, there we go. And, hey, we don't see a thing out there. In fact, <clears throat> the only thing I see close is up here in northern Illinois. And there we got some pretty good storms up there. I'll zoom in a little bit let you take a look at them. Uh, they're ripping and roaring up there, aren't they, Mark? They are. Uh, they've had severe thunderstorm warnings up there several times through the day. Those are just off to the west of Chicago. And uh, they've had between inch and three-quarter uh, down to inch uh, hailstones falling mm. to the ground up there. They've really had a lot of problems with the hail more than the wind. Well, you know, hail is, a, is one of those unknown, or let's see, probably not unrecognized mm. dangers as much as some of the other stuff like the wind and the tornadoes and stuff. But um, hail certainly makes a big difference. If you're out in it, you got to take some kind of protection. You know, I actually have learned that I can go in here and I can click on this little thing here and get some information about that storm. And it says the hail size there is one inch. That's that's severe, of course, and then uh, the severe hail probability of actually hitting the ground is 40%, and the probability that they are actually getting hail is at 100%. So, yeah, that's a pretty good storm, and uh, I imagine that's going to track on off to the northeast. It's not going to affect us any at all, and I don't think that's anything we're going to have to look forward to in the future. Um, Mark, tell me about it. Uh, not for us. There is a chance for some severe weather. They've highlighted an area for tomorrow off to the west over in Missouri, uh, like just just about like it was last week. Uh, they've got a bigger threat over that way for severe weather. But our threat here is is not very high for severe weather. Our bigger threat's gonna be maybe a breezy day, maybe lightning. So be safe in the lightning. Remember if the thunder roars, go indoors. Oh, and okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank the National You're Weather a Service. Poet. That's our slogan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we also got a little danger, too, if we get those winds up tomorrow. You know, we've got a problem with fire, right? Yes, we do. Uh, in fact, there is a fire weather watch in effect for Thursday morning through Thursday evening. 
uh, in the counties, starting about the lakes and going off to the east, including us here in Christian County. Uh, and that just means that the humidities are going to be low and the winds are going to be high. And that increases the chance if there's any kind of a wildfire that gets started, it'll spread and grow quickly. Now, just to the east of that, right in our eastern counties that we cover over toward Bowling Green, uh, Louisville uh, National Weather Service has issued a red flag warning, which means that there's a, a high fire danger uh, for that. And that's also for tomorrow afternoon. And that includes our viewers over around Logan County and in Simpson County. We've got a lot of viewers over there. So, yeah, you guys, please don't set any fires tomorrow because it's going to get out of hand really quick if you do. And, you know, I did that last year. I kind of, you know, I knew it was, a, it was a dry atmosphere, but I still tried to burn something. And I kind of regretted doing it. Good thing I had a bucket of water close by. So <laughs> I won't do that again. So don't ignore that. If you've got a red flag warning out, even if you do not, there's an elevated fire danger, and that's because the low humidity and the wind's getting up, and so those fuels will catch up really quick. Now, I know a lot of us are talking about the uh, weather coming in tomorrow night. I think it'll be in, well, it's looking like it's going to come in the wee hours of the morning now uh, as we get into Friday morning very early before dawn, and then I think it'll continue throughout part of the day on Friday, but it's going to be a fast mover. Um, but a severe threat looks like it's going to be almost, well, it won't be zero, so they can't rule it out. But uh, might see a strong storm, but I don't see much in the way of severe. Isn't that what you're seeing? Pretty much. Uh, the marginal area for severe weather, the Category 1 out of 5, uh, is off to the west of us. And it does encompass some of the counties right there along the Mississippi River. But beyond that, we don't have much of a severe threat for tomorrow. Now, coming in behind that, we do have some cool air moving in for the weekend. Yeah, that's, uh, that's something no gardener wants to hear right now because you want that uh, warm soils to help uh, permeate uh, where, where at least the, the plants take root and start growing. But uh, is there a chance of frost? There is a chance of frost. Right now, uh, the winds are forecast to be up enough to not let us have any frost, even though our low temperatures on Saturday and Sunday night are forecast to be down in the middle 30s. That should give us a potential for fr frost. If you live in a, a valley, a low-lying area where you're sheltered from the winds, you could see some frost on those mornings. So if you have any of that tender vegetation, you might want to go ahead and get it covered. Yeah, I guess uh, especially if it's like tomatoes, a lot of people try to get tomato plants out early. Um, you know, I guess if I were planting it, I haven't gotten any planted yet, but I was sure thinking about it. Uh, get some straw or something, newspapers, cover them up good, and then be sure and rake that back in the daytime once the temperatures get above uh, the cold part of it. And uh, so that's, uh, that's not the only problem we're going to have. I think we'll see another threat of possible severe weather as we go into about the middle of next week, and that'll be followed by still another cool spell. You know, we got all these little winters we have to go through. I think, uh, I think right now we're still in dogwood winter, but coming up is going to be black locust winter because I hear they're getting close to blooming. And uh, then as we get into late May, if I'm not mistaken, we start getting into blackberry winter. And that's when the blackberries go to blooming. And then finally, I think there's linen breeches winter, which is sometime in June. I don't know where they got that term, so don't don't be even bother asking. <laughs> you know, I've, I've never heard of linen breeches. I guess, I don't know, it makes you think of something like silk or something, but I've never heard anything like that. But anyway, so once we get past that, then our growing season can take full shape and we'll move forward. But, you know, then our also our severe threat is going to probably go up. Is that what you think? It should, as we start getting uh, more uh, warm air into the area, more humidity into the area, and as, especially if we continue to get these cold fronts, we'll continue to see a chance for severe weather. We're just now getting in the beginning of our true severe weather season. And uh, the video we're going to be seeing later was from the, the horrible year of 2011, yes. uh, which was just absolutely terrible for severe weather. We're hoping it's not going to be that bad, but so far this year, all of the severe weather and tornado outbreaks have been over toward Arkansas. They've not been back in the traditional uh, Tornado Alley area. They've more been over in our area, which is called Dixie Alley. Yeah, and of course, one of the uh, one of the characteristics of Dixie Alley is the fact that 
Most of our stuff comes at night, which is absolutely the worst time for it to come. Most of you, I know uh, folks who are viewing this, uh, you've been like me a lot of times, you hear that a storm's raging outside and you and you wake up, you, you look for my post or you look on my page or something and, and I try to let everybody know that, yeah, I mean, you know, either it is severe or it's not, but uh, you know, so far so good. And uh, let's just keep hoping that it stays that way. Uh, so have a way to get those warnings at night. You know, we're number, I think we're number three behind um, Alabama for nighttime tornadoes. I'm not sure, I believe I'm right on that. It's either Alabama or Mississippi, but uh, I've got those graphics somewhere. I'll try to have them next time. But uh, yeah, and number three in the nation. Now that's saying something. So it also shows you that we have, the, the nighttime tornadoes are much more dangerous than daytime because you can't see. And this video we're going to show is going to be one of those rare daytime events. And I remember 2011 very well. Uh, it was a year that uh, some of us got PTSD just from being out in those uh, storms for weeks at a time. And I know I was out for at least two weeks straight. Tornadoes coming down all around different areas. And uh, it was no fun at all. So um, I hope we never see those kind of days again. Well, so let's go ahead and we're going to take a look at uh, the day that TGA. Now, this is going to be a, a, an abbreviated version. This was actually part of a little documentary they started doing on us that never got completed, but maybe someday. And uh, now, and I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, you're going to want to watch this, and then I'm going to tell you what we're going to have coming up in the future because I know you're going to watch that. So first thing, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. That's merely YouTube's way of saying, hey, they've got this many viewers. And uh, I know I think if you try to do it from a phone and you don't have an account, they want you to set up an account. Basically, it's just just put your name and a password in there and, and you're good to go. They don't charge you a thing for it. Uh, and be sure to hit like on it because that increases our demographics, helps us to uh, get more viewers. And they say, hey, we might give you some money for doing this. I said, OK, no, we'll sure take it because this stuff is not cheap that we're working with. So. Uh, hopefully it'll help us keep this channel going and um, uh, maybe it'll be something good for all of us. So let's go ahead and take a look at the 2011 TGAS tornado. After the wall cloud weakens, Powell quickly realizes the most dangerous storm is the one in the south. He makes the decision to reposition his team to assist the other spotter units that are being battered by the storm. Yeah. 
Take cover, take cover. You got a uh, tornado warning on that area right there. Uh, ECC sound sirens. Therefore, this part the ECC landline. We have several buildings in the industrial parkway that have collapsed. Record of several people injured. Have a report of a barn that was in the air on 41 South. Being careful to avoid the most dangerous part of the storm, the team's worst fears are realized. They are only three minutes behind a tornado. Well, Mark, that was certainly an experience that day. I tell you, it's, um, it's one of those things, but you saw how quick the emergency services responded. Uh, thank goodness there were no fatalities in that situation because it could easily have been. It was a pretty large population in there that could have been uh, some problems, but at least uh, there were only seven injuries, and I don't think any of those were too serious. So uh, all in all, it came out pretty good. But you, you actually went down there with the National Weather Service, uh, didn't you, to do an assessment study? Yes, we did. It was the next day, and we went down there to uh, assess the damage and to establish with National Weather Service that it actually was a tornado. And uh, saw one of the most unusual things I've ever seen in the damage path mm -hmm. of a tornado. Uh, on the east side of the building there, the tornado touched down just as it got to the building, there was a tree line right there, and it took out that line of trees and threw all the debris down beside the plant. There was also a flock of blackbirds in those trees, and it took out the flock of blackbirds. And as we looked down the debris field, all we saw was these blackbirds, and the most unusual thing, every one of them were lying there, and they, they were perfectly intact. They weren't torn apart, but every one of them was missing their, their tail feathers. So all you saw was these little pink, uh, tailless bird tails sticking up in the air as you look down through the debris field. It's one of the most unusual things I've ever seen in a debris path. Yeah, the tornado sure can do some serious stuff, and uh, they do a lot of unusual things. They'll take one house and leave the next one untouched. It's just the way they are. But um, i tell you what we're going to do, though. You, you remember the December uh, tornado outbreak? 
back oh, in yes. 2020. Oh, yes. quite well. Yes, that's when Mayfield and all those folks, you know, had one of the worst nights they've ever seen. And it was not a good night for us either. So in the future, coming up, and this is why you're going to want to hit subscribe and like on this and notifications because we're going to show you a video from inside one of our storm intercept vehicles. And you're going to find out just how close they got. And believe me, it was nip and tuck. So you're going to want to watch that and see what happens to them. And also, we're going to be looking at, uh, we've got some video that one of our other interceptors, Crystal, uh, Crystal, that works in here with me, Crystal Fowler, uh, actually shot of part of the roof coming off the copper steel. And most of you remember that. That was, I think, March 3rd, the big wind event when uh, there was a lot of wind everywhere. In fact, we measured, uh, wasn't it 76? 76.3 yeah. right yeah. here. 76.3 miles an hour right here at our location. So that was something to reckon with. So anyway, like I said, be sure and hit like and subscribe and notifications because you're not going to want to miss those uh, videos when they come up. And right now we're going to try to do at least once a week on this, maybe more as soon as we can get our hands on this technology where we know what we're doing. <laughs> I don't want to get on here and fall flat on my face. So I'm trying to make it right for you guys and, and uh, hopefully you appreciate what we're trying to do for you. But anyway, don't worry too much about any severe weather anytime in the near future. We kind of keep an eye out on Thursday night into Friday, but uh, like I said, the severe threat's mighty low. So uh, I think we'll be in good shape. So anything you want to add? No, enjoy the beautiful weather while we have it, and we'll see you next time. Okay, see you guys, and I love you.